Wahiguru ji ka khalsa, Wahiguru ji ki fadeh. Over the years, talking to people, uh, people have given different perspectives of what Sikhi means to them. And I thought it'd be nice just to give a couple of those out. Sikhi uh, could be described as a, a spiritual practice. Just explain that a bit further, would be once you've got your aim in mind, is what do we do to achieve that? Guru Tahib is giving us, he's giving us a technology to achieve that. Uh, so we can do look at our rehat uh, as a spiritual practice. Uh, so first thing in the morning, we're waking up. Uh, and we're doing Naam Simran, then they we're doing our prayers, basically singing hymns of divine love. You look, you know, you, you're washing your soul with these beautiful hymns, uh, and then doing the, then hopefully you're raising your consciousness first thing in the day, you, you're hitting yourself for about an hour of, of um, you know, pure truth. Uh, and that kind of elevates your soul first thing in the morning. And during the day, then you're trying to uh, do two things. One is to limit the amount of negativity coming into your thoughts, uh, and that is by fighting your calm, Grod, Lob, Moh, Ahankar. Also, you're trying to do something positive, which is to stay connected to your one. Uh, and Guru is saying, look, don't even forget Wahai Guru for one second. So you're doing things like doing Swa Swa Simran, or trying to s- remember that you were made by this one throughout the day. Being honest and earning your livings honestly uh, is part of that. It's part of connecting to what is the reality and what's the truth about life. Uh, and then in the evening again, you're doing Rara Sahib. Um, and then going to Gurdwara if you can, do Aarti um, and all these prayers in the night time doing Kirtan Soila all these things are, are a spiritual practice designed to lift your soul and, and basically get you to where you're hoping to get to which is to merge with the One Another way of looking at Sikhi might be to say well it's a game of love uh, and it's a game of love between the Sikh and the Guru the Guru being uh, the, the perfect being that's here to teach us the, the perfect truth and the Sikh being the person who's here to learn now the, the example of that is given in the Guru's lives. So you imagine Guru Nanak Dev Ji became the first Guru and he made six basically, people who were following him. Uh, and out of those six, we have the perfect example given to us by Pai Lena. Uh, Pai Lena being you know, a Sikh who fully accepted his Guru's hukum and you know, really just did whatever he could to uh, earn the grace of that Guru and, and gave his head effectively to Guru Nanak Dev Ji. And what did he get? Well, he got given the highest seat he could get. He became Guru Angad Dev Ji. The, the story of Sikhi really sometimes can be the story of the Sikh and the Guru. And the Shabbat comes from uh, Gurwani also is, you know, Man Beche Sadgur Ke Paas, De Seva Ke Karj Ras. So when we sell ourselves to our Guru, we give ourselves. And Guru Angad Dev Ji, uh, you know, uses the exact um, line, which is uh, the game of love, which he says, Je to prem khilan ka chao, sir tal tali gali meri ao. Okay, so we give our, our whole, our head basically, eff- effectively to our Guru. And the ideal way of looking at that is what happened in 1699, when Guru Gobind Singh Ji picked up his kirpan and he asked for a head. Well, you know, when he called out that, uh, you know, at that time, five people were prepared to give their head to Guruji unconditionally. And, and really that game of love, is what Guru Gobi Sinji was testing on the six, and that's really what we're playing now. Another way of answering that question, what is Sikhi, would be Sikhi is a psychology. Uh, it's a way of looking at the world, it's a way of thinking about the world. Um, effectively, what we're saying is that we're looking through the lens of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. You know, we've put these glasses on, uh, the glasses of Gurmat, um, and we're saying, okay, look, how would Guru Nanak Dev Ji act in this situation? And we're trying to change the way that we think the change that with the way that we uh, react to situations around us. And we're trying to ask ourselves, what would Gunan Dev Ji do? And all the Gurus are set examples for us to follow in our thinking. Uh, and also the Gurbani itself is telling us how to think about the world. Um, and this is really, we're taking on the two parts, which is the Guru's examples and the Guru's Shabad to change our thinking. Uh, and you know, if you look at Guru's lives, for example, they were fearless. So we should be fearless. Um, if Guru was a revolutionary. So we should all also be a revolutionary in the sense of what Guru Nanak Dev Ji was trying to achieve. Um, and also other things, other things we could take on are the compassion that Guru Ji had for people. You know this um, humility that he was talking about and the, how humble they were. So a way of looking at the world might be to take on some of those values that Guru was talking about and really imbue them inside us. It's not just something which is um, empty or just something that we've, we listen to, but actually something that we've taken on and changed our entire way of thinking, our entire way of looking at the world through the Guru's eyes. Guru is here as a teacher um, and he is teaching the truth and what this is is wisdom for the whole world to take on. Um, and so therefore you're trying to say to people, look, it doesn't matter what religion you are, it doesn't matter 
uh, what culture you've come from, this wisdom is wisdom that anybody can listen to. Just the, in the way that people can often quote you people like Nelson Mandela or Martin Luther King, the Buddha. Guru is teaching us things and that wisdom can be applied to everybody all over the world. And one of the greatest examples I've seen um, that I think that we should really get out to the world is Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji and their sacrifice. I think it's unparalleled. Here is a Guru of a Sikh, of a faith, giving his head, in fact effectively giving his life um, for the sake of somebody else's freedom to practice their religion. If you look at Guru Gur Gurbani, uh, you will see that Guru is giving teachings to people of other faiths as well. Um, why are they doing that? I think that's because they feel that they are Jagat Guru, in the sense that they are here to teach the whole world how to be better human beings in their own faith as well. That we're not here to convert everybody to Sikhi. Uh, we're, in fact, we're rather here to spread the wisdom. Sikhi is a, is a culture. Now, what I, what I, why I say the word culture is um, that yes, it is a faith, but also there were 10 Gurus. And from the beginning of Guru Nanak Dev Ji through to Guru Gobind Singh Ji, uh, you know, during that time, there was a definitive culture that the Gurus fostered. Um, because basically what Sikhi was trying to do is to change people. Uh, and change doesn't come in one generation sometimes. Um, a cultural change comes over a longer period of time. It's a culture that comes with its own set of values. So a set of values of how to, uh, how to behave in the world. By that we mean equality and truthfulness, freedom for all people. But culture also brings with it some other things which are very important. Um, there's a culture of music. Uh, the the rag kirtan, uh, the singing of prayers, is very important to us as Sikhs. Uh, and in fact, if you go back um, a couple of generations, uh, there were Muslims who were singing Kirtan in Darbar Sahib. And that culture of music, of Ra Kirtan, of actually appreciating the arts, is a very important Sikh culture. So poetry has often been a very big part of, um, of Sikhi. And Pai Veer Singh, for example, uh, was called the Sixth River of Punjab because of how much he wrote. You know, uh, Professor Puran Singh and the beautiful stuff that he writes, that comes out of the Sikh culture of poetry, of appreciation for music, appreciation for the higher art. Uh, and part of that might also be things like, for example, uh, within the Sikh culture, or within people who are Sikh, there's a, a great sense of entrepreneurship, of not begging, of, of being basically independent. Uh, and that's something that you can see even from people who convert into Sikhi. Um, they often come from very independent minded environments, very, f um, very entrepreneurial. Um, by entrepreneurial, I don't mean somebody who's necessarily trying to make loads of money for themselves, um, but I mean somebody who's not afraid of going it alone and going separate in, a, in, a, in the big wide world. And really it comes from this idea that gurus will take care of us. Um, and that culture has been borne out um, throughout all of Sikh faith. But one other way of looking at Sikhi would be that actually Sikhi uh, is a vision. It's a beautiful vision for the whole of mankind for the whole of humanity. Um, and within that is this idea of Khalsa Raj, but that's not the main part. The main part is that what Guru is saying is that this is how human beings and human society can organize themselves. It's a vision that the Guru showcased with the six. You know, for 10 generations, they built up this culture, this idea, and they put it into practice. What kind of country, what kind of world would it be if the Gurus were in charge? You know, this would be the world which would have a lot of freedom. Equality. It wouldn't be a world where we're sitting there telling everybody to become a Sikh. That's not the world that Gurus envisage. The Gurus envisage a world where the basic necessities of life um, would be provided, like that Maslow's hierarchy, which you can you know you can easily Google. Um, Guru is saying we should provide everybody with you know the basic levels of education, of food, of uh, healthcare, uh, and once and, and really, if you look at our world, we have more than enough resources to do that. But how can we do that? It's by fighting greed. It's by fighting excessive attachment. It's by fighting excessive amounts of, you know, uh, corruption. So, such uh, living in this world where we are praising the qualities of truth, of contentment, of uh, of sharing, of varnake shakna, of langar. You know, these are all things that Guru is trying to inculcate. The Gurdwara really is a school for us to learn these values, for us to learn this vision, and then apply it to the world. In our uh, history of our faith. We've only been around for 500 years um, from Guru Nanak Dev Ji's time. And within that time, you know, the Guruship period has only been 300 years. Within those 300 years, we've gone through a lot of different things. Um, you know, the Mughal invasions, um, the two Kalukaras, following that, the British uh, takeover of India and how that affected Sikhi itself is a big way. And then now, what's going on with the Indian government? So really, this vision for the future, um, it is really a vision that we haven't had a chance to put much into practice. But with Guru's grace, more and more people are coming into Sikhi in the West and also from people who come outside of Punjabi culture. And this vision really uh, is yet to, to 
uh, manifests itself on the earth. But anybody who looks at that vision and looks at the Guru's examples, like Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, um, it's a vision which has profound hope for the whole of humanity. I'm going to interrupt myself to make two points. Sikhi could be seen as revolution because Guruji was a true revolutionary. He actually started a revolution uh, and he created people that were going to follow through that revolution. He took the existing social order and totally turned it on its head. Power moves from traditional centers to that of the individual. So an egalitarian revolution. But firstly, let's look at the spiritual revolution that he caused and let's look at the social revolution that he caused. Now you have a society where there is no uh, priest or clergy. Anybody uh, who is conversant in the scripture can actually get involved and lead that congregation. What Guruji is trying to do is cause you to connect directly to your creator. The Sikhi aim is this emergence, you know, to become one with Waheguru. And it's quite revolutionary how Guruji sets up Sikhi because he effectively he gets rid of any idols, any superstitions, any of the things that would previously hindered you and makes it purely about the one. You know, what you've got is a society which is stratified into two main areas. On the one side, a culture which is very much about idol worship, honouring specific holy people like the Brahmins because of their inbuilt divine to a right. And Guruji says, no, no more holy people, no more idol worship, no more going to specific uh, holy places. There's no more of those. But also Guruji says, well, there's no more holy months, um, no more holy days, uh, and let's get rid of all these long lists of rules that you have to follow. What Guru is saying is, look, let's focus upon the character. Let's build the character of a person who intuitively tries to do the right thing. You know, it's not about just the outside only. The outside root, Guru Gobind blessed us with it, um, but it's not the end all and be all of Sikhism. I'd say it's almost to be seen as the icing on the cake. You know, the cake has to be nice. Um, but the icing kind of tops it off. Let's look at the social revolution. This is really interesting because what Guruji does is he basically causes um, a revolution whereby the sovereignty of the individual person is recognized. So what you have this kind of almost Russo type of the civilized man who keeps his, always keeps his sovereignty but only submits it to the, the will of the, of the collective. And the Khalsa is that collective. You also see two very important parts of that revolution. Firstly, the feminine revolution that Guruji causes. You know, we shouldn't forget that what Sikhi was trying to do uh, was liberate everybody and give freedom to the individual. And that includes the females. You know, take that to the point where Guruji gives a sword to a woman. I mean, how much more can you liberate someone if by, by actually arming them? Uh, and also telling them, you know, there's no more uh, person for you to go through. Connect straight to Waheguru. And the second part, now the Khalsa is no longer just another religion. The Khalsa is not trying to cause, you know, Khalsa ki fateh. No, the <laughs> Mohaiguruji ki fateh. A lot of religious people at that time were only concerned with their own religion. Now Guruji is coming along and he's saying, listen, rise above religion. Be above religion, try to have a revolution whereby you serve the whole of society and the whole of humanity. They're not trying to cause a revolution whereby we end up becoming the winners. No, we're trying to cause a revolution where the human race wins. Another way that we could see Sikhi is that Sikhi is simplicity. You know, we're just trying to strip away all the facade of religion and spirituality and society and get back to the real basics. You know, we are all human beings. All of us, black, white, of every color, uh, male or female, uh, different religions, one human race, one creator, one truth. Let's worship that truth. Let's become one with that truth. You know, there's a great line from Japji Sahib that addresses this exact idea. Mara says, Aai panthi sagal jamati, man jite jag jit. Aai panthi, this is the highest order of the Sids and the Yogis. He says that highest order is Aai panthi is sagal jamati, all of creation. Why not just be one with the whole of creation? And you know what? He put that into our architecture. Even the buildings that Maharaj made are like that. Look at Harmandar Sahib, four doors open to everybody from all corners of the earth, from all colours, from all um, creeds, makes no difference to us. You know, you are a human being and I welcome you as my fellow human beings. And that's what Guru is saying to us to do. And the same with Langar, just makes everything so simple. Let's just feed everybody. Let's not ask them questions about who they are. Let's just feed everybody. Guru Granth Sahib Ji itself is simplicity. You know, you've got people from different religions, of different backgrounds, all in the one grant. And Guru is saying, listen, this is the truth. It's the truth wherever we are, irrespective of where it came from, it's the truth. And we should worship that truth. We should follow that truth. And it comes in Sukhni Sahib, you know. Sagal taram me taram 
har ko naam jap nirmal karm as long as we live a decent good life and we meditate upon our creator that's the best religion amongst all religion and even guru gobind singh ji simplifies it all and he says sach ko ho sun le ho sabai jin prem kiyo tin hi prab payo listen everybody i speak the truth only those who love will get to god guru sahib is saying to us listen forget religion embrace spirituality you know religion divides us why because most religions are exclusivists what they say is we're going to get to heaven you guys aren't so you better join us or you're not getting in sikh is not like that we're inclusivist what guru sahib is saying is this is the truth this is the light and no one will get into heaven except through this truth you know guru is not given us a long long list of religious laws that we have to pour over and examine and then come up with some sikh ethical uh, rules you know we're not trying to do that guru is saying look build your character as long as you have the right kind of character which is based upon compassion upon truth upon righteousness upon bravery and upon being fearless and also as long as you stay away from your uh, your calm crowd law more and ankar all these things they join within us to build a moral compass and when that compass becomes stronger and stronger and stronger we instinctively don't want to do the wrong thing we instinctively want to do the right thing another way to look at the simplicity is there's no more rituals there's no special days no special months no special weeks no one day to eat this meat or not to eat this meat you haven't got like okay do you need them five days a week and take two days off it doesn't work that way you know we're trying to live a very simple god oriented life on this earth if anything i said here um was beautiful then really it's nothing to do with me these are all things that people have told me and what i've come across um in my time talking to great six uh, and also if if anything you haven't agreed with then i apologize for that you know i'm full of mistakes we can only ask our guru uh, to give us more gurmat wahguru ji ka khalsa wahguru ji ki fateh